This is my Triton TRA001 router. It is a very capable router with 2400 watts of power and three and a quarter horsepower. Over the years, this router and I have done lots and lots of work. Consequently, it's a little bit battle scarred in places. For example, the small pin that forms the winding mechanism fell off a few months ago, so I needed to perform an emergency repair with a nail. This router sits in my router table and is connected to a Craig insert plate that is specifically made for this router. When I was in the market for another router that could take a half inch cutter, I didn't hesitate to buy its smaller sibling, the JOF001. I've had this router for a few months now, so I thought I would share with you some of my thoughts. The first thing you find in the box is the wrench for single hand collet changing as well as the three collets, an half inch one, a 12mm one and a 6mm one. What Triton call the multifunctional fence, the micro winding handle for when the router is table mounted, a large metal base plate, a set of instructions and safety card and snugly packaged away the body of the router. Straight away the weight difference between the JOF and the TRA is noticeable. One thing that signifies a quality power tool is the length of the cable and the quality of the cable and here we have a long good feeling quality cable with an EU plug nested inside a UK plug. The on off switch is hidden behind a spring loaded door which is a good safety feature and the door will not operate when the router collet is extended into bit changing mode. Screwing a collet on in this position is rather difficult but I've done so here to demonstrate the shroud that guards the cutter above the base plate. The router has a generous plunge depth of 59mm or just under 2.5 inch. And the depth can be regularised with this spring loaded depth stop as well as a 3 point turret and secured with the locking lever. Fine adjustment is by the knob on the top or the winding handle if mounted in a bench. The base plate is a very robust steel construction that clips on on these spring loaded bolts. These are the same bolts I've used to mount this router in my new workbench and then this multifunctional fence slides in and out on this base plate. As yet I've still to use this base plate but it does feel really sturdy and I think the router will be really stable once mounted upon it. Finally, on the top of the router there is a turn wheel that selects the five speeds and dust extraction port seems to sit really snugly. So let's look at a few similarities and difference between the two routers. The base plates are exactly the same, although the new one has a little bit more plastic, although I think this enhances it in this case. As you would expect, the TRA router is much bigger and much heavier than the JOF version. But to mount the larger router, you need to take out this huge spring from this cap, which makes it hard to swap between bench operation and hand operation. The JOF router has two plastic handles which are the same as one of them on the larger router. I've removed this so I can get it into my router bench. On the other side, the handle on the larger router allows you to plunge and control the depth. The base plate takes off both routers 
very simply with three screws. Although the base plate on the JOF router is much smaller than the TRA base plate. And here is a view of the naked base plate of the routers. My Craig insert plate is specifically made for the TRA router and it will not line up with the holes in the base plate of the JOF, although I guess you could drill your own. And like most things on the smaller router, the winding stick is much shorter. Ok, so let's make our first cut with this router. With an half inch collet and a copying bit, we can trace some holes from an old workbench top to a new workbench top. There is plenty power in the router here and there is no slowing down of the cutter. And changing the cutter and the collet out for a quarter inch version and then installing a chamfer is quite a simple task. And with quite a large base plate, it feels really stable on the workpiece. And of course, if you do not want to go to the expense of buying a Craig jig, then you can make your own base plate. Here I'm making one with some MDF. All in all, I'm really happy with this router and I think it'll make a great addition to my toolkit. I bought this via Amazon and I thought I got a good price and paid for it via 5 interest free instalments so I think it was a bargain. This base plate is being inserted onto some Craig levelers and is placed in the middle of my new outdoor workbench. And mounting in a table in this way provides fine adjustment with the winding lever. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so there are some more of my videos here.